Hello everyone, I am Julian Morris with the Channel 5 News. In the headline, St. Martin's School student Kiara Gardier tops the Grade 6 National Assessment. Prime Minister Skert invites a CARICOM OAS mission to meet with stakeholders on the way forward for electoral reform and hundreds of preteen students to be vaccinated against the human papillomavirus or HPV for the first time. The details coming up. Some tips to reduce mosquito presence in and around your home. Keep water storage containers properly covered. Remove containers that can collect water from your surroundings. Keep garbage bins tightly covered. Pick up your litter and remove all tires from your yard. Keep gutters free of leaves and twigs to prevent stagnant water. Prevent Zika, Dengue and Chikungunya. Fight the bite! This is a public service announcement from the Dominica Red Cross. This message is supported by Flo. First up in the news, Kiara Gardi of the St. Martin Primary School has topped this year's Grade 6 National Assessment. The announcement was made by Minister for Education, Peter Seja, on Thursday. This year's top performers in the Grade 6 National Assessment are as follows. Kiara Gardi, St. Martin Primary, and that is a female with four A's, A in language, mathematics, social studies, and science. Shante Avril, Ebenezer Primary, again a female, four A's. Kobe Daru, female, convent preparatory, four A's. Kamal Peter, a male, convent preparatory, four A's. And Jenny Lawrence, female, St. Martin's Primary, four A's. So the top performers, we have four females and one male. The ministry remains concerned over the disparity in performance level between boys and girls in the grade six national assessment. I believe that it is incumbent upon us to find ways as an education system, as a nation, to narrow the gap between the performance levels of boys and girls. Over the past years, we have undertaken various interventions to increase performance levels and further attempts will be made to identify the challenges that our boys face, providing them with high quality teaching to address their difficulties and give effective support at the ministry level. It was also announced that Cabinet took the decision to increase the monetary value of scholarships and bursaries to secondary school students and Dominica State College students effective September 2019. In the past, a student who received a scholarship received $500. That has been increased to $1,000 from Forms 1, 2, Form 3. The bursars will receive from 300, that has been increased to a value of $700. At the fourth form level, the scholarship has been in increased to $1,700, a value of $1,700. And bursars, at the fourth form level, $1,200. And at the fifth form level, since most of the books used at fourth form are also used in fifth form, 
an additional value of $300. And in both the cases of the scholars and the bursars, the CXC fees will continue to be paid. As regards the Dominica State College students, the annual allocation for books and stationery amount has increased from $600 to $1,200, while transportation has also increased from $500 to $1,000. In other news, Prime Minister Skerritt has invited CARICOM, the Commonwealth Secretariat and the OAS to mount a joint mission to Dominica to meet with government, political parties and other stakeholders. The Prime Minister has asked these organizations to make recommendations on the best way to implement the reforms to introduce identification cards for voting and to revise the register of electors. Mr. Skerritt says this will ensure that the public's confidence can rest in the decisions taken to move the electoral process forward. I have received a favorable response from all three organizations and I expect in the coming weeks that their representatives will be on island to undertake this mission. This is a continued expression of the government's efforts to ensure that on a sensitive matter like this, that there is complete transparency and that every opportunity is given to the public to discuss the issues in a mature and rational manner. I hope that all those who purport to have concerns will use the opportunity in a respectful and peaceful manner to interact with the mission on these issues. The Prime Minister says the opponents of the proposed legislative amendments are fighting against themselves. The attempts to bring this legislation to Parliament has been resisted by some who fail to realize and appreciate that this legislation achieves the very thing that they claim to want. The Electoral Commission requested and received the support of an expert from the Commonwealth to guide them on, an electoral, on electoral matters. That expert reviewed the draft legislation and apart from reservations expressed on provisions of the bills which have since been removed, found that the process for confirmation of electors and revision of the register met the standards of international best practice. I wish to make it very clear that this government, which I have, I have the honor to lead, will never condone or acquiesce to a process that will result in the disenfranchisement of people. Dominicans who are legitimately on the register and who are not disqualified under Section 7 of the Act must be given a fair chance to participate in any process that will lead to the introduction of ID cards and the revision of the register. The human papillomavirus or HPV vaccine to be administered to over 800 preteen students here is Andrea Louis with a report. HPV is the most common sexually transmitted infection and is usually deemed harmless and goes away by itself. However, as there are over 100 types of the virus, some can lead to cancer or genital warts. The vaccination of preteen students will be done after an extensive education and sensitization program by the Ministry of Health in an effort to reduce the incidence of cervical cancer among youth. Research has proven that the HPV is the main cause of cervical cancer. This virus is a common one which can be transmitted through skin-to-skin -skin sexual contact. And the manifestation of the infection range from asymptomatic, as I said above, to genital and anal warts, to cancers, mainly cervical cancer. The only way to prevent this deadly disease is through the use of the HPV vaccine. I repeat. The only way to prevent this deadly disease is through the use of the HPV vaccine, free of which are now available through the PAHO Revolving Fund. Daru was speaking at a national stakeholder consultation on cervical cancer on Thursday, which was organized in collaboration with the Pan American Health Organization and the World Health Organization. Studies have also shown that preteens have a higher immune response to the HPV vaccine than their older teenage counterparts. 
although, although sir, we, there's a lesser risk of exposure before the age of 13, of course, given the fact that most of them are not sexually active before that age, I said most of them. The risk for exposure to the HPV increases after the age of 13. In light of all of the above statistics and medical scientific developments, as the Minister of Health, it brings me great pleasure to officially announce the implementation of the HPV vaccination program here in the Commonwealth of Dominica. The target population for this vaccine will be our pre-pubertal children in grade six of our primary schools, and those would be mainly between the ages of 11 to 12, and we intend to vaccinate both male and female preteens, a total of 845 children. The minister reiterated that the vaccination of preteens will only be done after an extensive sensitization campaign involving all stakeholders. So while the program has been officially launched, of course, by yours truly a few moments ago, the actual administration of the vaccines to the target population will commence after and only after, and I repeat, so while the, while the program has been launched, the actual administration of the vaccines won't commence until all healthcare professionals are sensitized to the benefits of the HPV vaccination, thereby arming them with the requisite skills to effectively recommend and administer to the populace. And it won't be, the vaccine won't be administ administered until such time that the public and other stakeholders, such as the media, parents, advocates, civil society, everyone is thoroughly educated about cervical cancer, prevention, screening, and treatment. The vaccination of the students will form part of a comprehensive program for the prevention and control of cervical cancer. Andrea Louis, Channel 5 News. The Ministry of Health is lamenting the small number of Dominican women who actually get screened for cervical cancer. Cancer of the cervix is the deadliest but most easily preventable form of cancer. In developing countries, it is the second most common type of cancer in women, hence a disease of public health concern. According to the 2001 census, Dominica had a general population of about 72,000 and a female population of 34,882. Female persons eligible for cervical screening was 11,221. Now, total screening, the public health service continues to be a low 21%. Okay, so out of the 11,221 persons who are eligible for cervical cancer screening, 21% has been screened. Schillingford was speaking at the cervical cancer consultation with the aim of introducing the revised cervical cancer guidelines to the wider public. Total diagnosis of persons with cervical cancer between 2008 and 2016 was 128, while total deaths due to cervical cancer from 2008 to 2015 was 25. The youngest client was 21 years old, and, the, and two clients were above 70 years old. So I just want you to ponder and see why it is important and so significant that we move across to these guidelines. Cervical cancer can be treated and cured if detected early. If not treated, cervical cancer is almost always fatal. You are watching Channel 5 News. We'll have more after this. with TB sneeze or cough, healthy persons nearby breathe in the droplets and the bacteria can lodge in their lungs. People with weakened immune systems such as HIV AIDS, alcohol and drug users, smokers, children and the elderly are most susceptible. Persons with a cough should take precautions when in contact with persons in public places. Cover your mouth when sneezing and coughing. Visit your doctor or health center. You must complete your treatment. TB can be cured even with HIV. Be responsible. Help stop the spread of TB and HIV. Protect yourself and others.
The importance of planning for natural disasters, both at government and family level, is receiving greater attention as we move deeper into the hurricane season. Chairman of the National Emergency Planning Organization, Prime Minister Roosevelt Skerritt, did not mince words when he told a meeting on Wednesday. It was imperative that families approach disaster preparedness with a certain degree of seriousness. As the main fundraiser for the, for, for the, for the country, I understand the difficulties and the sheer cost of responding to natural disasters. And I believe that the, the better we can plan, the more involved families are in recognizing that we can't just sit at our homes as evil-bodied men and women and expect people to bring this for us and bring that for us and to do this for us and do that for us. We have to plan. You can't call me to cut a tree near you had my brother. Cut your tree. If, you, if there's a, a drain at the back of your house um, placing a uh, threat to your home, get people to clear it for you. Why should you have to call me to come and clear it for you? And these are the things that we have to speak honestly about and in a transparent manner about. That whatever you can do for yourselves, my brothers and sisters, do it for yourselves. That which you cannot do, we're doing that Nipo. But there are things that we can do. That breadfruit tree in our head, yes, it brings some breadfruit, but most of it falling down before you get it. By the time it falls, it's, it's too soft. Cut it, prune it. We have to engage ourselves, where is that Mr. Minchin and Burton? We have to engage ourselves in a pruning program, a national pruning program. Who tell us that we have to make a tree go 40 feet for the bare fruit? So why other countries, they, they have to bend to, to harvest fruit or stand to harvest fruit and they, have, they harvest more fruit than us? We have to engage in a pruning program. You mean for agriculture? There's no way, you know, you should be climbing trees. The people want to to climb trees. The only person who climb a tree in the Bible is, 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 is Zacharias. And, and you want to do that to see Jesus, not to catch a fruit. So, we have to prune those trees because these trees place a hazard to us by blocking the roads, uh, following people's homes, injuring people. I mean, these trees are hazards. And so we have to engage ourselves in, in this thing because the more we can eliminate and minimize the, the impact of hazards, because hazards are really what causes the destruction. The Prime Minister says NEPO has a role to play in educating the public on what hazards are and how to mitigate their impact in time of disaster. By the end of next week, the Prime Minister wants to see a national mobilization of people at the community level to help eliminate the presence of hazards in those communities. For example, we have the National Employment Programme. I would like for us to use that National Employment Program along with the village councils, along with the disaster committees, along with the various community-based groups to engage ourselves as a nation in the elimination of hazards in the communities. For example, the clearing of drains, the clearing of smaller ravines, the clearing of culverts, all of these things, if we don't pay attention to them, can pose serious threats to lives and properties. A simple drain, as we saw with Erica and Maria, turned into a major uh, water flow um, mechanism. And therefore, we have to try to, to minimize this. Are there trees blocking the ravines? Are there trees blocking the drains? Do, do we still have this practice in Dominica where we dump everything we do not want into a drain in our backyards? And, and, and encouraging the possibility of mudslides and landslides. And so we have to mobilize the country, mobilize the country to, to inject and to, and to inject into them a consciousness of their responsibility, a consciousness of their responsibility. So I'm hoping that we can, we can have the, the support um, of the various individuals and organizations at the community level um, to, to help implement this um, effort. And the Minister for Disaster Management has appealed again to Dominicans to recognize that preparedness is key if we are to minimize the impact of natural disasters on our communities. Mr. Isaac told the NIPO meeting on Wednesday it was critical that Dominicans on every level get involved in the process of disaster preparedness and mitigation. 
He called on village councils and parliamentary representatives to show leadership throughout the country. A key area in which we want complete involvement at the community level is the issue of shelters. But we'll have one of our, our main chairpersons of the subcommittee reporting on that matter. I would also like to point out that at the post policy level, we remain resolute in ensuring that all the processes which we have already um, been doing over the years, and I would dare say in some instances we could be the benchmark of the region, will ensure that this will be put in legislation. I think um, most times we don't see the good that we do. But I would like all of us in Dominica, including the members of the NIPO subcommittees, that we need to commend ourselves for the effort and the success, our successful way in which we have implemented our programs, and also how quickly we have bounced back from 2017. NIPO meets each year to discuss an approach to the upcoming hurricane season and to resolve challenges. And senior Met Officer Marshall Alexander has sought to explain the reasons behind the storm predictions for the 2019 hurricane season. The National Oceanic and Atmosphere Atmospheric Administration, NOAA, has predicted a near-normal season this time around. There's a 30% chance of an above-normal season, a 30% chance of a below-normal season, and a 40% chance of a near-normal season. 9 to 15 named storms are predicted, of which 4 to 8 are expected to become hurricanes, and 2 to 4 expected to become major hurricanes of Category 3 and above. Alexander says the reason for the prediction is two, two competing factors. The reason for, for the prediction is based on the expectation of El Nino, which is basically the warming <coughs> of the ocean of the Eastern Pacific and the expectation for warmer and normal sea surface temperatures over the Atlantic and favorable winds over West Africa. Now we have to remember that this is not a landfall prediction. It's the prediction for the frequency of development. El Nino is basically the warming of the ocean of the Eastern Pacific, which would result in a lot of wind shear over the Atlantic, which would spread out the energy of tropical cyclones, re reducing the, the chances of development. Here are some tips to reduce mosquito presence in and around your home. Keep water storage containers properly covered. Remove containers that can collect water from your surroundings. Keep garbage bins tightly covered. Pick up your litter and remove all tires from your yard. Keep gutters free of leaves and twigs to prevent stagnant water. Prevent Zika, Dengue and Chikungunya. Fight the bite! This is a public service announcement from the Dominica Red Cross. This message is supported by Flo. To end the news, a look again at the headlines. St. Martin Secondary School student Kiara Gardier tops the Grade 6 National Assessment. Prime Minister Skerritt invites uh, CARICOM OES mission to Dominica to meet with stakeholders to chart the way forward for electoral reform. And hundreds of preteen students to be vaccinated against the human papilloma virus or HPV for the very first time. Feel free to contact us at news at marpin2k4.com. You may access our past newscasts on our YouTube channel. On behalf of the production team, I am Julian Morris. Thank you for watching. Do join us tomorrow.